In this video, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about the F3 or debug screen. But first, let's set the scene. You and your friend are having a grand old time playing Minecraft, and then all of a sudden, your friend asks, where are you? You say, oh, well, I'm in the river near the desert. But your friend is like, no, no, no. What are your X, Y, and Z coordinates? And you think, what are coordinates? Aren't those like graphs in math? Dumbfounded, your friend tells you you have to click F3 to open the debug screen, because that's where you'd find all the information you'd ever need, including the coordinates. Even more confused, you decide you're going to take a hiatus from Minecraft for a little while. Okay, so maybe that's not actually the scenario you've run into, but you probably clicked on this video because you've had some trouble with the F3 screen in the past, and in this video, I'll be explaining everything you need to know on the F3 screen and all the shortcuts that go along with it. I'll be going top left to bottom left, and then top right to bottom right. I just made it a little bit bigger for you, and we'll start out with the first thing. At the very top, you can see on my screen, it's Minecraft 1.17.1, and then in parentheses, fabric-loader-0.11.7etc, all that. All that's showing you is the installation you currently are using, or the game version you have. So for me, I'm in 1.17.1, and I loaded up using the fabric loader, which allows me to use mods. If we move to the second line, you'll see the FPS, which is shown in the numbers that are constantly changing, hanging up in the upper 200s right now. Also, you'll see the amount of chunk updates that are occurring, so if I turn my head like this, more chunks will come into view, and you can see the chunk updates skyrocketing and then coming right back down. The capital T and a colon you'll see with the whole bunch of weirdly formed words after show the first INF means I have set my frame rate to max frame rate, unlimited frames. If you change that setting in yours, you'll see maybe 150 if you limit your frames to 150, or VSync based on the refresh rate of your monitor. Then right after that in the same words, you'll see fabulous on my screen. That shows the graphic settings I choose. So if you change yours to fast, it'll be fast instead of fabulous. And then it also shows you the type of clouds you choose. And if you don't have clouds turned on, you won't see anything but I have fancy clouds on, you could have fast clouds, it would say fast clouds. And then you see the B right after that, which shows you the biome blend you currently have. Right now I'm on two, and you can see the difference between the dark oak forest and the savanna biome. If I move it up to maximum biome blend, then you'll see it's much smoother in between these biomes. On the third line, you can see integrated server at some number milliseconds ticks. That just shows the amount of milliseconds it's taking for a tick to occur on the integrated server. At the end of the line, you see a number and TX that shows, and I quote the wiki page, number of packets sent by the client, and then the number and RX, also to quote the wiki page, number of packets received by the client. I'll be honest, I don't really know what that means. Every other F3 screen video I've watched has also said they don't know what it means or they've completely skipped over it. So if that's still a little bit confusing to you, you're fine. You probably won't ever have to use it. Okay, moving on to the fourth line, you'll see the first C and a colon and then a ratio of two numbers. That represents the number of chunks rendered compared to the number of chunks loaded in the surrounding area. So based on the number of chunks you're allowing in your render distance, that number will change. Speaking of render distance, the D right after shows you what yours is. It's called the client side render distance, but in most cases it just shows you what you have set here. The next three are probably not going to be that interesting to you. PC means the pending chunks that need to be batched. PU is the pending uploads to your video card. And AB is the available buffers to use in the batching process. Moving on to the next line, you'll see the first E. And this is actually a really interesting one that I don't think a lot of people know about. That shows you the number of entities rendered over the total number of entities in your area. So if I go like this, you'll see E turns to 1 over 193 or 92 or around that area. That's because I am one entity right there. And if I move it down a little bit, it's now 2. And if you can see at the very bottom of my screen, right off to the right of my um, hotbar slots, you can see the little cow down there. And that's the second entity besides myself that's being rendered. The B right after is unused and should be always 0 for you. If it's not, congrats, I think you broke your game. After that, if you use Optifine, you'll see a DL. I was trying to figure out what that meant. I can't figure it out, so if you know, please leave it in the comments. Anyway, right after that, you'll see the version of Optifine you have. Moving on to the next row, you have P with the total number of particles in the world, so like potion particles, and then T, the total number of entities in the world, so that's just always going to be the denominator of the E on the row above. 
And then that A is, once again, another Optifine thing. I still can't find anything on it, so once again, if anyone knows anything, please put it in the comments. The next two rows are details on the client and server chunks. Um, not a lot of people use this one, but there are a few west and east coordinates that go along with it. The last row of this little section shows you which dimension you're in. So right now I'm in the overworld. That'll change if you go to the nether or the ends. And then after that, the FC is the force loaded chunks. You can force load chunks using the force load commands and obviously you can add, remove, all that good stuff. Okay, now into the XYZ coordinates. These are by far the most useful thing you're gonna find on this F3 screen. And basically all it is, is if you imagine a graph in math with the X axis, the Y axis, it's three dimensional, so you also add a Z axis. So the first number you see is gonna be on the X axis. If I'm facing towards the Z axis, if I move left and right, you can see the X moves with me. And the second number you'll see is the Y axis, so that basically goes up and down. The third one you're going to see is the z-axis, so in the way I'm facing that'll be backwards and forwards. And this is super useful if you're trying to remember where something is, if you plan on getting lost, or just get lost in general. If you take note of these coordinates, you can get back to them really easily. Right underneath that is block, which just tells you the block you're on. So if I'm standing right here, I am on the block negative 844, 85, 426, and that's basically just your coordinates rounded to the nearest block. The next row tells you your location inside of a chunk. So right now I am at 0, 0, 0. That's X, Y, Z, all zeros in the chunk. If I move up, you can see the Y coordinate of the chunk moving up. And then if I move forward, you'll see the X and the Z coordinates moving around. It's just showing you what blocks inside of that cube you are. So if that's the origin right over there, that's zero, zero, zero. You can move up, you can move along the x-axis, you can move along the z-axis, and it'll, it'll show you it there. Then right after that, you'll see in, and then a whole bunch of numbers. Those numbers are basically the xyz coordinates of blocks, except instead of blocks, it's chunks. So if you pretend each chunk is a block, um, starting from zero, 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 Moving one chunk over will either move you in the X, Y, or Z direction, depending on which direction you're going. Now moving down a row, it may surprise you, but Minecraft does in fact have cardinal directions, and those cardinal directions are just based on the positive Z directions, positive X directions, negative Z directions, and negative X directions. Um, so north would be negative Z, so south would be positive Z, east would be positive X, so west would be negative x. And then the numbers right after that just tell you the angles you're at from the positive z direction or south. So right here you can get pretty close to zero zero when you're facing exactly south. If I go towards north you can see um, my head is still at zero so that second number but the first number is getting increasingly close to 180. Next you'll see client light and it'll be followed by a number and then probably the same number followed by sky and then some number followed by block. The sky is basically the light level at your feet. Light level can go up to 15 and all the way down to zero. So if I walk into the dark oak forest, you'll see the light level go down. With the block, if you look at a block that emits a light level, so the grass block doesn't emit any light level. But if I get an ender chest and place it down, you'll see the block moves. As I get closer and further, you can see the change in the light level from the block. Moving on, you'll see a CH and an SH. Those are client side and server side. I'm gonna go over the server side because the client side is the exact same thing. Basically what this is telling you is highest blocks in your uh, X and Z area. And they're, cause there are multiple numbers, there are different restrictions on those blocks. So the first S is the highest non-air block. That would be, if I'm standing right here, that would be this block right here. And then the next one, the O, that's the highest block with the blocking motion material. And basically all that means is I can't go through it. It's going to block me. The M is the highest block with the blocking motion, which is exactly the same thing, or it's a liquid. So if I go over here, you'll see my M changes to 62 because there's one layer of water 
but my O is 61 because the gravel is right there. The water is one block higher. And then the ML is basically the same thing. It's the highest block that blocks motion, but specifically not leaves. So because I'm standing under a tree right now, the highest block is the block I'm currently standing on. The next one is pretty self-explanatory. It's the biome you're in. So currently I am in a dark oak forest biome. It just has dark forest right there. And then if I move over here, it moves me into a plains biome because I'm in a plains biome. You'll then see local difficulty, which shows you the difficulty and the chunk you're in. If you want to see how that works, I definitely recommend going to the Minecraft wiki or some other site. And then after that, you'll see day and then a number. That's how many days you've been in the world, which is just an interesting thing to see. Um, as you can see, my day tick just went up. I'm currently on always day, so you're not going to see night in this world. But I have been at it for four days now, which is that's pretty cool. So next, you're going to see a whole bunch of letters and numbers which seem really daunting but they're actually super important if you're interested in building farms and other technical things like that so the first sc you're going to see is the total number of spawning chunks in the world and usually this sits around 289 but it's just the total number of chunks that can uh, spawn mobs then the first m you're going to see is the amount of monsters that are currently counting towards the mob cap so this will change depending on how much they despawn, how much you kill them, um, how much they spawn, etc. The solo C you'll see shows the total number of passive mobs or like um, creatures. So that's like cows, pigs, chickens, those kind of things that are currently spawning on the surface. Um, that also can change. The A you're going to see is the total number of bats. Um, technically it's ambient mobs, but that's really just another word for bats. Um, followed by a U, that's underground water creatures, but that's axolotls and glow squids. So the new mobs in 1.17. First W you're going to see is the normal water creatures. Those do not include fish, those are dolphins and squids. Second W you're going to see are for the fish, the total number of fish, and those account for all four types of fish. And the M just shows the total number of miscellaneous entities. Then you're going to see sounds. That first fraction is basically going off of block breaking. So you can see that changes whenever I break a block. Um, that also goes for pretty much any other sounds. And you'll see a plus symbol and then something out of eight. Those will be the ambient sounds. Um, and by ambient, I mean like cave noises, music, or those kind of sounds. And then in parentheses right after that, you'll see mood. This is actually a really interesting one. I don't think a lot of people know this, but basically what it's telling you is how close you are to the next ambient sound, or in most cases, that's cave noises. So if you're in the mine caving and you often get jump scared by the weird cave noises that come up, you can periodically check your F3 screen and see what percent the mood is at, because once it hits 100%, you'll get that weird eerie cave noise. But because I'm not in a cave right now, it's currently at 0%. We're gonna skip past the next one because that's based on the fabric loader, which is what I'm using to load up the game. And we'll go straight to debug, which is basically referring to the little pie chart you sometimes get when you turn on the F3 screen. A lot of people find it really annoying and I don't think some people know how to get rid of it. And it's really simple. Um, you can see pie and then shift right there. So if I go in and reopen the F3 screen using shift, you can see I get the pie chart and then I just have to close it and reopen it without shift. You can do the same thing if you want to see the FPS plus TPS um, graphs. And then at the bottom, I don't think I really need to go over this, but it's basically saying if you need any help, just click F3 and Q. Okay, so if we move our attention up to the top right of my screen, you'll see Java and then a colon. That basically just tells you what version of Java you're using. And it'll either be 32-bit or 64-bit. Move down, you can see the amount of memory Minecraft is using and the amount accoladed and then a whole bunch of other stuff um, relating to that. And then you'll see CPU and that just tells you the CPU you're using to see my specs of my CPU. And down you can see the display that shows you your display resolution. You can change that if you go into video settings and change it to something like that. It's going to make my resolution awful. Yeah. So I just I just changed mine um 
and you can see the display changed and uh well my, my game's looking a little bit weird and then under that you can see the graphics card you're using you can see my specs right there and then the last part about this f3 screen is the little area that sometimes appears only showing when you're facing a block a fluid or an entity so right now i'm looking at this block right now it's a grass block it'll tell me that it'll tell me the target block location um, it'll tell me if things can spawn and basically anything that can happen to it with a whole bunch of um, tags on it if i move over to fluids you'll see similar things a little bit less detailed um, but it'll show me like i'm looking at water right now so it'll tell me minecraft water um, falling is set to false because you don't take fall damage and it'll show you the tags and then if i'm staring right at this cow it'll tell me my targeted entity is a cow you might get a little bit more detail when you have a little more uh, complex mobs but you know it's it's nice to know a cow when you see a cow and the f3 screen can definitely tell you that anyway i hope this video helped you out if it did consider leaving a like and subscribe i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll catch you next time